Let's segue into the next thing. This right here, game journalist panic. Rant incoming. <laughs> well, I don't know if there's going to be a rant, but well, no, wait, Meg's probably going to rant. Anyway. Um, <laughs> That's what I do, y'all. That's why I'm here. I am okay. here for this. So I ran into this post here, and I, I Jordan's one of those professional game journalists, right? Journalist. Journalist, whatever. Uh, but anyway, so I ran across this post, and I now know who Vera Dark is. Didn't know beforehand. Vaguely think I kind of maybe heard of a name somewhere. Oh, she's maybe cool people. Covered a, a thing she said or something in the past, but yeah, I used to watch her stuff. Way anyway, early. so she's got this tweet here, and this game journal should be required to live stream and upload a complete unedited playthrough of a game on their hey, social in order to continue receiving uh, review codes for publishers. This allows the audience to see their authentic reactions and ensures transparency. It also holds journalists accountable, ensuring they actually play the entire game before writing and releasing the review. I uh, 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 Hey, Dara's in, the, Dara's in the chat, man. Yeah, yeah, and if Chad doesn't actually announce that it's a dono, I can't click over to look at it. Well, I... Dara with the $2 don't know. Well, hello, stranger. What's this show about? Right now, it's about journalists panicking about transparency. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, but yeah. it's, it's about gaming with a side of salt and many, many topics in gaming that deserve salt. We are <sighs> mining. <much>. How <laughs> you doing, mining man? This, mining those mines. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah. So, this this sparked a big thing. It did a big thing because I yep. mean I saw a little oh, bit on it. It was a big thing, or at least it was a big thing for me because I made one little post about it, and it just was banging off constantly <laughs> of people bending over backwards. Now, really jumping through those, really doing those acrobatics. That's crazy, though. I mean, wh why though? I mean, yeah, you could say, you know, I don't think that see, that's actually here. <laughs> The thing is, everybody is spicy turn, today. Though. What is happening? All right, five dollar dono from Dara. That's right, Daddy is in chat, and he's going to make it troublesome time. <laughs> okay, Daddy. <laughs> okay, I, I, I will not. I will not call. And immediately the, realize yeah. I'd probably get you banned. So never mind. <laughs> Don't say that then. <laughs> Daddy, Daddy's in the chat. Daddy Dara, there we go. You just, you just know it was a certain um, <laughs> provocative sites theme. <laughs> oh, we don't need to go to the hub tonight, Chad. But anyway, apparently people are getting hung up on this uh, upload a complete unedited playthrough, uh, and they keep really getting hung up on this whole. You want us to stream eighty hours worth of game? That's going to yeah, get us you play like, it, blacklisted and all this other stuff. And I just wanted to take this for a second, dissect it, and break it down for a hot minute. Oh. This idea of journalists. You might want to switch to your playing... tea drinker. Wait, what? I, I'm I'm thinking I might need to, but I'm not I'm not ranting yet. I'm I'm gonna. <laughs> okay. uh, it depends on how pissed off I get because I'm trying to like. <laughs> <it. laughs> Oh, what what's wrong, Daddy Dara? <laughs> <laughs> Three dollar dono from Dara. Never mind, coming from your mess. He almost threw up. Yeah. <laughs> that's what that's what she said too. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. Wow. Did you want Chad to wow. call you Daddy? Wow. Is that what it is? <laughs> Chad, call him Daddy. <laughs> hang on a second, hang on a second. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Ready. Yeah. It was silent, dude. We could not hear that. It, okay, my Go XLR broke then. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> it was Sorry. the monster voice, and it did not come through well at all. Okay. Well, I'll just say regularly. Hey, Daddy. <laughs> Welcome to ASMR with Chad. Oh. Uh... But anyway, so they keep getting hung up on this whole game, right? Online. And, and they keep no, no. getting hung up on this whole before release date bit, too. No, no. And, and this... What'd you do? <laughs> Don't know. 
Don't know. Don't know. Don't know. Don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Are you ready to turn around and cough? <laughs> <coughs> anyway. Uh... Okay. <laughs> so you want me to announce donos. Um, careful what you wish for. Oh, you can read the donos for me for now. <laughs> okay. Prepare to be interrupted. <laughs> but anyway. So they, they get hung up on all that stuff, right? And the idea of games journalists actually uploading their playthrough mm-hmm. is an awesome idea, in my opinion. Yeah. I think so, too. You know, and, and they keep bending over backwards saying they can't do it. It's impossible. It's a thing. And it's like, nobody wants you to break street date. Nobody yeah. wants you to break, you know, the uh, embargo. Mm-hmm. And, and it's real simple. You have to play the game in order to review it, right? Yeah. So when you boot the game, you also boot OBS or something, you know, free software. Mm-hmm. You don't have to pay for it. And then hit the record button. Come on, Zio. It only hurts a little bit. Doctor's <laughs> order. I don't think Come this on. is better. This is I, not better. I don't think this is better. You know, I think I'm going to go back to doing it. This is nightmare fuel. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that, that was horrible. Anyway, I don't want to stop it. <laughs> He's like, stop it. I'm scared. <laughs> I need an adult. Hey, Scott, welcome to the stream. You came in at an awkward time. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yes, it is. Definitely an awkward time tonight. Anyway. Oh. Oh, uh, but you know, you hit the record button and then you do everything you normally would as you're reviewing it, right? You play the game, you look at the stuff, you take your notes. When you get done playing the game, you hit end record. And then later, after, you know, because the review is going to come out before the game yeah. releases more than likely, because they usually do, you know, the review goes up. And, you know, considering I'm going to go on a limb and just say that none of these reviewers, who do the video ones anyway, they don't actually do the video. Like they don't edit or anything. They just read the thing. Have a good night, Dara. I won't read the this thing. For Zio. <laughs> hey, Zio, uh, you got to, they're right. heading out with the final dodo. $10 dono from Dara. Glad I made you your last stop of the pay it forward stream. Love you guys and enjoy the rest of your night. All right, Dara. Thanks, have a Dara. good night. Bye. Thanks for stopping Thanks for by. Nightmare we love fuel. you too. Appreciate it. <laughs> We greatly appreciate it. But um, I forgot what I was saying. Well, so I think at your point, <laughs> he is terrorizing us, Stephen. But um, I, I would say... <laughs> I, I would say that it's it's fine to do the recording and then they say, oh, well, you can't do the whole game. Well, you could do the whole game. People do playthroughs. But the thing is that first and foremost, you just you you do your your pre-review before it comes out and you just say what you think about it. And then after the game launches, your re- your full review can come out along with you playing, you know, and that's fine. Why do you mention that, um, Meg? <laughs> <Zio>? Yeah. Uh- <laughs> But anyway, so yeah, Chad decided to do a first look first after streaming on... Thorns of uh, Throne and Liberty yep. mm-hmm. for about two hours, and he, he posted it on Twitter, by the way. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's up there in Ward format. He was capable of doing this. He's not a professional journalist, but he was able to do it. Um, but anyway, so my tweet about it was like, you know, regular people do this every single day to zero viewers on Twitch. Hello. And well, then games zero. journalists are like, really had to that's impossible. <laughs> but um, anyway, so the, the point is that there's a lack of uh, trust in games journalists, especially when it comes to reviews a lot of the time now. And in order to build back some of that trust, they need to show that they've been playing the games. And I'm starting to get on the bandwagon of game journalists don't actually play any of the game hardly that they're reviewing. I don't know where they're getting their talking points from. Maybe one person does it and just writes down some notes and says, here, make your review. Or maybe the company sends them the stuff to do it at this point. But, you know... 
I. Yeah, I'm trying to think of my words now. Well, I'm starting to think that maybe it it reminds me of when I was in my uh, English class and well, English two class in um, college, which actually made me almost want to give up reading altogether. And I love books. Um, and the thing is that they would read the story, but it wasn't for the story. It was literally they were like, we're going to write an essay now about symbolism or about subtext or something that the story wasn't about i was like well gosh the, the, i hated those assignments anyway, uh, they're continue. they're terrible and I, I i literally almost gave up on words i was like i hate written words after that class you have no idea the thing that saved my life actually my aunt handed me the, the shogun book which is kind of an odd way to say i hate words now and she hands me a 1300 page book but whatever so um but the thing is that these are people who are not looking at the game as a person who actually enjoys games they're looking at it like they would in their English classes where they're trying to be original and unique and have this different take on it. Well, if you look at it sideways and squint and try and apply, I don't know, this type of life philosophy to it, and I'm somehow going to shoehorn in this other thing. It's like with abstract art, basically. It's like these, these abstract art critics when they're trying to tell you what they think that something actually means when that's not what it means at all. It was like, I thought it was pretty. Um, you you get this kind of thing, and this is basically this this postmodernist approach to um, to critiquing anything, and it's it's come into games not understanding that the people who actually care about this are not going to be coming at it from a postmodernist sort of um, what is it uh, deconstructionist point of view. They just want to play game. It has been long day. I want to play game. I want to sit down yeah. and look things within face. And I want to enjoy my time because in like three hours, I have to make dinner and then go to bed and then do it all over again. And I am tired and this is my fun. Okay. Yeah. So but don't, they, don't you understand, Babushka Meg? Yeah. That, uh, <laughs> they need to understand in, things. In Soviet, okay. In Soviet Russia, game play you. <laughs> yeah, no, but exactly. I mean that's also part of the problem too. It's like when you read some of these reviews, and we're going to talk about just written reviews at this point, real quick, um, because they don't really do video reviews except for on bigger titles for the most part. Yeah, and you know usually there's somebody else who's doing the editing. Somebody else has probably written the script for whoever's actually reading the review to begin probably with. Exactly we probably it. don't know who the real reviewer is on those unless they actually have it listed in their description. Nobody's looked, um, you know. But you know, with a lot of these written reviews, you can just feel the disdain for the fact that they're reviewing this particular game. Yeah, and that has bugged me for a very long time because this was a problem back in 2014 still. Mm -hmm. You know, you can tell that that's not the person who should be reviewing this game. You, you know, you don't say, hey, you, go ahead and review this RPG even though all you ever play is fighters. That's a bad idea. That's not how yeah. that should work. You should not have somebody who knows nothing about the genre doing that. You should have people in staff who know about who are like specialists yeah. for particular things and use them to write the review because they're going to Absolutely. write the, the stuff that is actually important to a gamer who enjoys that genre. It should probably be a, a it should probably be a contractor job. Don't. <laughs> yeah. Um, they just, I guess they probably handle it like a newsroom or something. It's like, all right, so, uh, power world's coming out. Jimmy, you got power world. Uh, yeah. Other game coming out. We've got a code here for, uh, the Witcher, whatever, uh, Tara, you, you get this and you know, that's, that's, I mean, so I can assume on that point, but as for when it comes to reviewing a game, it's pretty easy. Um, for the most part, to actually do the whole play the game and then write down the information, take notes, and then putting it into paper after that. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe not easy for everybody, but I assume it would. It's easy for me. <laughs> How's that? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, that's the job, though. If you can't do the job, yeah. you shouldn't be doing the job. But I think that it should actually probably be more of a gig economy sort of thing. It should be more like on contractor because of the fact that there's so many different types of games. And like you said, not everybody is into that type of game. I am absolutely lost when it comes to something like Path of Exile. I was able to pass it, 
Uh, I'm still mad about it. It's okay. It's all right. But yeah. I know that I missed out on so much of the nuance in it. And I didn't even listen to the story because I didn't care. I was like, <laughs> it's been a long day. I just want to hit something in the face and then run away. Yeah. The, distracted by life. I'm sorry. Yeah, it can. Uh, but, yeah, it can. <laughs> I'm sorry, distracted. But the thing is that because of the fact that we have all of these games that are specialized and they're all these different genres, maybe it would it wouldn't be it's not efficient um monetarily to actually have all of these people on staff all the time when you when these people might not necessarily be the best people for the job, you know? So yeah. it would probably be better to just kind of have a bunch of people on retainer and be like, hey, we're gonna we're gonna pull you in at this time or for this yeah, many just articles. Have it a contract type thing yeah. at that point. Yeah. Uh, but then know. again, I think the problem with that is the fact that you know the company itself gets the code. Like IGN gets a code for new new game. Yeah, but that's right? when you have an NDA sort of thing. But you know, unless you get contractor in mm -hmm. to studio to actually do the thing contractor can't access ign's copy of game uh why not can't they send it to him uh so i don't think they can well i mean i guess they could but <laughs> then they lose access to the code and it's on their steam library instead or whatever library you know and i i can understand if they want to hold on to their copies and chances are they've probably got a thing saying they can't do that to begin probably with. probably distracted so, probably it's chad's fault yeah definitely chad's fault distracted everything anyway <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so I did have a semi-productive, you know, back and forth with somebody, which, uh, <laughs> you know, was, was interesting. He kept going on to these tangents about review scores. Cause apparently I guess Vara or in this, this is a thread of multiple tweets apparently. Mm -hmm. And yeah. in there she was talking about review scores, but since there was no link to the original tweet, it's just a screenshot because Jordan's a pussy. Yeah. I was like, that's um, what brave people do. So stunning, much brave. Yeah. He, he can't actually link the tweet so we can go see what all she's talking about. Just the snapshot. So all I ever I was focused on was the snapshot because it's all I know about. Yeah. Well, if uh, this is you what know, you're going to address. Dude kept going into like review scores and this, that and the other. And, you know, because there's like hundreds of games out there, they can't review everything, which is why you always have sevens out of tens for the most part, because these are going to be all your like ones through seven. And it's like, that, that's great. And all we're not telling you to review every single game. Yeah, uh, I think that's and for the, the most part, y'all never do, you never did that to begin with. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah, uh, the you fact just... that they admitted to doing that is kind of concerning because but, that means that they're a jack of all trades and a master of none. But yeah, there was also another thing that that came up that you know piqued my interest, and he was talking about well, they have contracts; they can't play the whole game or a good chunk of the game and upload it later due to contracts. And, you know, at first thought, I, I was thinking, you know, well, yeah, after the embargo, you can. Yeah. Because the embargo is the contract. Yeah. What and this guy was talking about was a further contract beyond the embargo, which leads me to other questions. Is like, wait, does that mean that like IGN and Kotaku and whoever it is who gets these review games, do they have like a contract with Ubisoft separate? From the embargo contract that states, oh, by the way, any game of ours that you get, you can't show more than 30 minutes of footage. And, and if so, is there other things in this contract, which is why they seem to be so, you know, favorable to certain games when they yeah. really shouldn't be. Well, they got busted for that a couple of times. A couple of different journalists did where they had a contract with XY company that <clears throat> minimum rating was like 6.5 or 7 that they were yeah. allowed to give would, otherwise they'd be in breach of that code would lead credence to why vera would be talking about you know review scores too mm -hmm. it's like so if, if you got like this contract with ubisoft that says any major ubisoft title that comes out you'll never rate below a 6.5 is that why everything is a 7 point or 7 out of 10 and up every time ubisoft launches it even though it shouldn't be I yeah. mean, we play it. We know for a fact it, it's not a 7 out of 10. I mean, we just had that Star Wars game launch. And it Bro, was... Dustborn was 7 out of 10. Out of 10. <laughs> I mean, we had Dustborn, which is definitely not a 7 out of 10 either. You know, 
those, those games were mediocre games. No. A lot of flaws. Okay. No. Porn was a lot lower than that. But, Thank you. you know, like, don't you Wars... dare take down the name of mediocrity. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I take that Star personally. Wars... I like half. <laughs> the Star Wars game was a mediocre game. Yeah. It could have been better, way better. Mm -hmm. They just, they didn't do it. They didn't hit the mark. And they did have some one-ups on Starfield already because you could transition to a planet without a loading screen. Yeah. Or using a menu for that matter. Mm -hmm. Uh <laughs> But, I mean, the concept for it actually isn't that bad. Although, if you really want that experience, go play Star Wars The Old Republic, the MMO. Seriously, yeah. if you want the, the experience that the Star Wars game was going for, it already exists in an existing free-to-play MMO right now. Well, and you can play to... as a bounty hunter, and you can make it male or female. And you could do that and have that experience. And to be honest, it's a better experience. And it's like an yeah. eight-year-old MMO at this point. So, <laughs> you know, but if they've got contracts like that, that, that would explain a lot. And, and that also, you know, leads to other questions like what exactly is in that contract? But, yeah. you know, this idea that you can't show your work is also ridiculous. Yeah. Because, you know, I got all the excuses in the world. It's like, oh, yeah, because they're like they need to add another 8,000 hours onto their workday. When are they going to actually take the time to do the thing? They've got to write the review and they've got to do this, that and the other. And it's like it takes like three seconds. You hit record yeah. and record. And yeah, then when the embargo is up, you upload it. Like it's not hard. It, once the heavy lifting and the heavy lifting is really simple, too. It's make a specific you know, YouTube page or whatever mm -hmm. for the reviews to go to. Like, you know, you've got the IGN page that posts the actual review, right? And yeah. then you can have IGN plays mm -hmm. or something. And that's the companion to it. So then, you know, say you've got journalist D-Pad Chad here and he's writing a review for Thorns and Liberty. Mm -hmm. You know, he writes his review. It goes up to Metacritic and all that stuff. Review. They they put their page up. So on IGN, by D-Pad Chad, Thorns and Liberty review. He goes through. He bashes Trump real quick and then calls <laughs> it a day. And um, that's how they work, Chad. Don't give me that look. Well, I'm no, no. He, he's, you he's you know, every review, review is the same at this point. They have saying, to... not not Chad. He's saying Chad. You know, the, the gaming <laughs> urinalist, the not gaming you. The alternate version of you. Your alternate you. ego. You see, Throne and Liberty is misogynist. <laughs> um, but anyway, so you you do all the normal review stuff, mm -hmm. and then you just have that video sitting there on the hard drive or whatnot, right? And then the embargo list, the game comes out, and then in a couple of days or whatnot, after the game has started circulating, people play it maybe a week later, something like that. You know, give it a few days so you're not just, you know, spoiling shit or something. Immediately, somebody uploads it. IGN has staff who can do that. It's not hard, and it's really easy. You just click the thing a few times, and then boom, it's uploaded to, you know, IGN Plays. And then you take it, you link to it in the description of, you know, or wherever in the uh, reviews or, or to the written review at the bottom, you put like companion piece play, you know, uh, so-and-so plays, you know, and then it's there for people to click on and look at. And then they can see Chad, you know, playing the game, stopping for, you know, five minutes to, to jot down notes and stuff and, People will test stuff menus up, and right? looking at yeah. menus and things, and he doesn't have to say anything. I mean, maybe if he's one of those who talks to himself, it's like, oh, oh, sweet, they have a slider for that. I, I better add that. And you know, <laughs> and that, that's all you have to do. <laughs> it's yeah. no added time. And the, well, it, it, I think you it, know, it, 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 you actually play some portion of the game. I think that it is a little bit of added time, but the thing is that you have to look, you, we, you should be able to look at the positives as well as the negatives. The negative part would be um, whatever's in that contract, in which case um, that that's actually going against your credibility. But um, 
yeah. also, um, you know, you have to, you know, take a little bit of time. Maybe this person isn't used to that and they have to kind of learn that they might have to like comb their hair or whatever, you know, be a little bit presentable. But well, I mean, other than maybe being a little bit presentable, okay, I guess it depends on where they are when they play the game <laughs> too, because comb my hair. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> from, from what I can tell Your beard. when people play and review these games, sometimes they take them home. Sometimes they're in yeah. office and stuff like that, which, you know, might be a bit of an issue. It would have to all be practically in office at that point. Or, you know, you've got to oh, actually hit really. the record button at home. No, yeah. but, no, because you can do the you can do the gameplay at home using OBS, no problem. And then send the file to the office for the editors to work with. And then they well, just see, I figured the office would be easier to set up. If they've yeah. got like a review copy on the Xbox, right? That one's a yeah. little bit trickier to capture, but I guarantee their offices have all the equipment necessary to do the thing. Uh, by the way, real quick, um, Ubisoft is a French, uh, French company, which is probably why they're giving up. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot they are a French company, aren't they? <laughs> I just saw Distracted by Life say Ubi is like the Canadian. Distracted. Ubi. Way to go, distracted! You've distracted us again. <laughs> well, I think that though, what you what they could get out of it though would be substantially more. A, you get a channel that gets views and it's going to get some sort of income. Two, you're actually going for to bolster your um your credibility because yeah. right now we don't think you guys play these games. We don't believe you. We don't think that you actually are good at these games or good enough to be offering any sort of opinion. We're like this this from someone who sucks at this game and can't play or this from someone who didn't even play this game and is just getting payola to, to say nice things. Which I, I will tell you this. Mm -hmm. I do use game journalists like ratings and stuff to kind of give me insight on what games because well, if they if they rate a game eight out of eight, nine out of ten out of ten, what a high rating mm -hmm. that signals to me to never play that game. <laughs> If they it's kind of like movie more critic. of a movie critique because the rating system on games are just busted in general. Yeah. Because well, they I do don't... rate the good ones uh, like a 9.5 out of 10 and stuff and yeah, very rarely a 10 out really of 10. But, you know, it, that's because they can't get away with it in the gaming industry like they could, you know, yeah. in other traditional medias. But that, that also led to another thing, too. Um the fact that they don't have credibility and people are questioned, that was the other excuse that I was also given multiple times. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, it's not going to change anything. It absolutely would. Well, mm -hmm. it won't overnight, no. And that's the problem with you. You want instant change and nothing good ever comes overnight. No. It takes time. Your reviewers have to start doing this as a standard practice. And then your editors who put the stuff up there because I'm sure they don't, the reviewers don't publish it either. They just submit it and then somebody else posts the thing up for review. You know, I, I know how media companies work for the most mm -hmm. part. You know, the person who writes the review writes the review. They do the thing. Somebody else might, you know, spell check it. Actually, you know, in this, t this day and age, they may skip a lot of processes that old journalists used to do yeah. at this point and then it just gets submitted after it's been spell checked and then you know the editor goes all right let's put it up and then somebody takes time to put it up on the page and all this other stuff but you know there, there are people to take care of that stuff it doesn't mm -hmm. really add a whole lot of extra work to the reviewer they no. just have to hit record and hit end record um, you know, and that's, well, that's a, about it. Honestly, it's a change, and I think that they're just resistant to change because it sounds like they'll have to do more, and they probably would, but they'd also they would also find that they would that the the juice that they get is definitely worth the squeeze, I think, because right now their 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 industry is dying, and we're we're not killing it, we're starving it. So yeah, we're kind of killing it by just not not feeding this beast, by not you know? engaging in it. Yeah, absolutely. They they but need food. They we need got, to clap so that Tinkerbell lives and we are refusing. We are sitting on our hands. Yeah, you and got people is, on video sites who are doing that sort of thing, but better. Yeah. And they yeah, have and more credibility because they play the game. And see, here's the thing. They don't have to play every single game and you watch it to know that they've played the game, 
right? Yeah, if it's you up know? there, I know that you played it. Okay, cool. But the thing is that, um, yeah, when it comes to these kind of sites, I literally only go to them if I'm trying to figure out when something is coming out or what the buzz on the street is on it. I will never go to them to find out what they think about a video game because I don't care. I honestly don't. I will watch a video on Rumble or on YouTube if I have to. Uh, <laughs> I, I will watch a game a game player actually talk about it which actually is takes longer for me and i actually would prefer written words but i don't trust them anymore i think they're all liars so i will actually take the extra time to turn on sound and to take the longer time to listen to a human talk rather than reading because i read faster than i talk and um i'm yeah i read faster than i listen sorry i messed that up anyway but um but yeah i will take the extra time because of the fact that i feel like they're lying to me and it's not worth my time it's absolutely not worth my time. So they right now they don't in me they don't have a they do not have a client. But if they actually started doing things where they would put things up and then I could read their review and know that it was legit, then I'd be like, oh okay, your 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 input is valid, and I would prefer to do that because I prefer the words. Yeah, and things and, have dried up. Know, well, when, it's when, drying up, and they're really mad about it. Oh yeah, I, they're, I think they're very they're, mad about it. They're very resistant. But it's like if Riker comes out and tells me, you know, things about Path of XL two and does a review on it, I believe he's probably played the game. He doesn't have to show me that he played the game mm -hmm. because he's a huge ARPG player. He plays mm -hmm. all the ARPGs. He's done it on stream multiple times for years, and he reviews a lot of these games and stuff. And it's like, yeah, I will trust whatever he says, and I don't have to see him play it. But Joe Smo from IGN, mm -hmm. when you come out and start bashing on a game that clearly looks pretty damn good, I have yeah. to ask, did you even play it? Because, you know, just recently we had that same question come in with, uh, what's the monkey game again? Um, Wukong. Wuk uh, Wukong, yeah. You know, it's like, did you people even play past the first hour of this game? Which, <laughs> which is another thing, because, you know, a lot of their reviews say this, that, and the other, and then what also needs to change is them stop adding additional shit that doesn't make matter. Yeah. Like, oh, and then according to this IGN article, the the company of this game is apparently rife with sexism. That nobody gives a damn about that. You want to change your image? You want to actually be more respectable and people to look you out and remember your name? Yeah. You need to stop doing that stuff. And, and you know, you saw it with uh, that Wizarding game too, Hogwarts yeah. Legacy. And this game is, you know, they're glowing reviews for Hogwarts Legacy. You know, they're talking it up. It's great. And then partway through there, near the beginning of it, there's this entire paragraph about how J.K. Rowling's a bigot. Nobody fucking cares. Yeah. The in only fact, one who cares is you and the other little freaks who care about that the moment, shit. The moment you try to use buzz, insert buzzword here, Immediately disregard everything else you're about to I mean, say. shit, there was a whole rash back in like 2016, I think it was, 2017 of games coming out. And every single review had this paragraph about how Trump was evil and bad. And it's just like, none of that needs to be there. Yeah. I want to know where the mechanics solid. Does it have a, you know, a pay store, a microtransaction store in it? You know, how, how does the controller hold up to it? How does the keyboard hold up? You know, what's are the, the skills? Are what they what, they what is this? What is that? You know, I want to know about the game itself. How are the graphics? Is there tearing? Is, is it, you know, does it have ray tracing? Stuff like that. <clears throat> I don't need to know about your political shit. Do I need and, a you know, halfway through it. On it. <laughs> Well, yeah. I, I think that this goes back to what to my point at the beginning when I was talking about my English classes in college, where they're looking at the wrong thing. As a person who reads, I don't care about all of this symbolism that's in there. I care about the actual story that's being told. The symbolism is secondary at best, maybe even tertiary. If or it just might be like, oh yeah, and that was there, and it doesn't even it doesn't even rank a number. The things that they are so concerned with are things that are not important to us. But the thing is that because these people are probably they 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 see <laughs> distracted cares about your opinion, Shed. Um, <laughs> the the thing is that what they're doing is they're basically writing their English papers. That's what they're. That's how they're approaching these things. They are approaching them like it's some college kind of college course, and they're trying to impress their professors. These Hear are that? these what? Hear that, Zio? My opinion, yeah. my somebody. Your, your opinion, my opinion matters only to distracted. Anyway, 
<laughs> oh, by the way, I, I got the best review of Black Myth Wukong I've ever seen. I linked it to you. Uh, where at? Okay. A monkey! <laughs> there you have it. Oh. A monkey! There we go. <laughs> so. oh. Best review. <laughs> But yeah, that, that there was also another thing that that came up because uh, it was talking about Dragon Age, right? The new or mm-hmm. Dragon Age, the new one coming out. Veilguard. Veilguard, yeah. There we go. Jeez, my brain doesn't Bailguard? work. I've worked all day. I, I dealt with a natural disaster all week. Yeah. You know, <laughs> all right, dry. he's gonna use the natural disaster. <laughs> I <laughs> am. <laughs> the whole world was coming down around me. Damn it! And it's not <laughs> literally. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, so, you know, they, they were, uh, the, the whole thing was, well, usually some of the, t- a lot of the times the company sends clips and that's the only thing they can use in their reviews. And it's like, well, that's fine. Again, that's, that's their reviews. Yeah. That's <laughs> right? not the proof. We're, yeah. we're talking about showing your work. Yeah. They're two separate things. And these people can't get these two things apart from one another they they got to marry them together but also led me to ask you know the question it's like so so what 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 actually happened did they just send like 12 to 15 clips and that's and, all they used they didn't and, and this is this is the really interesting part is before that i was told they played the game that's how they have the clips right or that's how they have footage for video reviews and then same person tells me, well, the company send them like 12 to 15 clips and that's all they can use in their reviews. And then it's like, well, okay, then what? That makes no sense. Both sides. <laughs> you're you're, you're kind of telling me two different things there. But at the same time, I absolutely believe that that is the case because a lot of these reviews, they have the exact same B footage, which, by the way, was another comment before before was talking about, you know, it's not like they just have random B footage that they can use or something. And it's like they have to get it from somewhere. Yeah. Right? By playing the B-roll game. And it's like pain. But no, it's it is B roll. If the yeah. if Ubisoft sends them 12 to 15 clips of their new game mm-hmm. and they can only use this in their yeah. review, right? That's all they're allowed to use. Mm-hmm. And then every review from like this video from like The Verge, IGN, uh. Rough Nut, um, you know, whoever, mm-hmm. uh, you know, is out there and they're all showing the exact same footage in the same spot. And the, the same guy is doing a kick at the same time in the same location. The it's really, 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 really hard for me to believe that they sat down, played the game, and recorded that footage by hand. Yeah, they were sent that. I- I don't know. And if are they being... making a review based off of just these clips and cliff notes that you know Ubisoft sent them? Is that what it is? Yeah, it's and that not goes... really a review. And that goes to our cre- <laughs> the credibility question that we have. Yeah, which that... goes back to credibility. And it's like if you show us your work, we know you actually played the game at some point. So I and don't it's know. Like, well, then they'll be saying you didn't really play the game. Well, that's what the fucking camera is for. For fuck's yeah. sake. Speedrunners have been doing this setup forever. Yeah. It's not hard for them to figure out to set camera, camera, to see you play the game. And they have the equipment to just do it already in studio yeah. or at the, the workplace for the most part. It's not hard to set it up and do it. They just don't want to. Which makes me believe that they don't actually play the games that much. And then when you have things like, um, I talked about this with Chad the other day because I couldn't remember who it was, but there was a review that came out and it was, yeah, you know, it was lambasting this game that was coming out. Mm-hmm. And then the company asked them to take it down. So then they went on talking about how this company's trying to force us to take down our review, blah, blah, this, that, and the other. And we stand by our words, and we stand by our journalists and everything. And the company's like, listen, we tried to do this privately. You need to take it down. But if you want to do this publicly, it will pretty much get nasty, right? And then they kept doing their victim thing. And then the company came out and was just like, and the studio came out and said, listen, we gave you two review codes. One never got logged into. The other one got logged into for about two hours. 
an hour and 50 some minutes of that one was sitting in the character creator. The other yep. 10 minutes was actually playing the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You didn't play our game. Your review is invalid. Take it down. Yeah. <laughs> And I and again, this this goes to what we all think, what we all suspect, and they they need to. And the thing is, I think that some of this pushback is people who are with either stupid or just completely devoid of um, imagination, or they're intentionally just misunderstanding. So, like, well, you can't put that in your review. Yeah, I duh. Nobody said this is everything. the review. <laughs> this is this is something that goes on a separate channel. This is another thing. This is in addition to, but this is how you got your review. It's we're not asking you to do something that you didn't already do. You already played this freaking game. We're asking you to turn on a camera while you do it. That's yeah, not so really. hard. So that's the thing. Now, yes, there are extra steps that are going to be involved to make it look presentable. Da, da, da. We're we're we want to be very very professional. Blah blah blah. Fine, but. The steps are not that much. And the thing is, right now, we doubt everything you say. We don't believe you. We barely believe you're a real person. So, I mean, this is... Well, they're trying to sound smarter than they actually are distracted. That's yeah, they, they, yeah. They, they... Also, I, I want to point out, there was a real famous quote. I think it was from Einstein. I might be misremembering, <laughs> but the quote was, a fool has to uh, des describe his hypothesis with as many words as possible while a genius can describe it to the average Joe. Yeah, absolutely. The word is erudite, darling. No. Um, <laughs> but no, I mean, I, the thing is that a lot of times they learn a lot of very fancy words, but they can't explain what these words are. Every word is basically supposed to convey a concept. That's what we're doing when we're using words. We're talk we're trying to find a it's way describing a self-proclaimed fool. Anyway. Yeah. We're, we're describing the thoughts that are in our head and trying to form them into a way that we can actually convey these ideas to another person. I usually just vomit things out. <laughs> well, we, that's what you're doing, though. That's what language is. You have, a th you have a thought, you have a feeling, and now you're giving it words and shape. And mm -hmm. that's how you and you hand it to other people so that they can understand you, which is why language is so important. One of my favorite um, terms, why they like to destroy language. One yeah, of my favorite you, burns is that you don't hide in speak it. English language as much as vomit it. <laughs> but I think that that's why that that's why they use so many big words or they change the meaning of words. They use these words to hide and to obfuscate where, what they're actually trying to say or the fact that their points are actually vapid. They'll, they'll use big words to make you feel like you're too stupid to argue with them and therefore you won't. And a lot of times when you say, I'm sorry, what do you mean when you say that? And they'll try to kind of say the word again. I'm like, yeah, that doesn't explain what you mean when you say that. Sell it to me like I'm for. Let's pretend I'm an idiot. Explain it to me. <laughs> I do, And I don't care if that takes a couple of points away from my intelligence and your opinion. If you can't explain it, you're not just a fool, but you're dishonest. So, you know, but I mean, I think that that is the thing. That's why they use the big fancy words. They do it on purpose. It's a way to hide it. To obfuscate what they actually mean. Who needs Confucius? We have Confucius. <laughs> Confucius say, "Man who farted in church said an own view." <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to believe that a lot of these journalists just don't play the game at all anymore. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, sense. it doesn't help that the few times that we actually do get footage of them playing, it's horrible. Yeah, I like, mean, the, of course, the two notable ones is the Cuphead tutorial. And then playing yes. that the new Doom game where the guy couldn't aim at all. Wait, it's I didn't like, see that you one. Oh, you didn't see that one? No. Yeah, uh, do oh, try to play. play. Uh, yeah, let me see if I can bring it up then. Uh, journalist. Yeah, I didn't see the Doom one. I don't think so. Uh, never forget the moment. Polygon. It was Polygon. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Never forget Polygon uploaded their own first gameplay footage of Doom 2016, and it was the worst and best casual moment in gaming journalism. But the uh, thing is, and the thing is that I don't mind that. As a mediocre ba basic player, that's fine. Okay, I'm, I'm watching. Trying to fast forward into the game. What? Oh. He's playing with one hand. Why is he playing with one hand? 
I mean, it, it really does look like he's trying to play this game one handed. No, he he hundred percent is. I know this because I've done it before when I was busy like dealing with the cat or drinking. Is that what it looks? I, no, 100%. no, I, I. It's not because this is also how my son played the first time he he was introduced to twin sticks. It, it's not just a one handed thing. It's somebody who's not used to twin sticks. Awesome. On a controller, because mm. my son did the same thing the first time he played Doom. Okay, now he can play Doom and Fortnite with the best of them. But yeah. Wow. So anyway. Wow, I'm bad. I'm <laughs> I'm. I am that, see, I'm not even mediocre when it comes to first person shooters and I'm appalled. The few times that we did get their gameplay, that is what we got. Shit like that. And it's like, okay, we know but, you never played a game until that night. And the yeah. thing is, though, I don't think that that's I don't think that that's necessarily bad. I think that you should have a review for normies by normies or yeah. people like my my skill put in your skill level and then explain and the thing is that that actually will help us understand when you're giving your review or when you're writing your review what this is coming from i don't want to hear a game on on like elden ring or something like that from someone who's absolutely amazing because i might go in there thinking i can play this game when in actuality no i can't i suck i'm going to i'm going to no, be mad i'm going to rage quit i make great stuff come from a lot of the time is their inability to play the game yeah. <laughs> and when you can see it, you can go, ah, okay. Now that's sense. why it's a five out of ten. They can't aim. <laughs> they can't do anything. And they have no idea how to jump. Okay. And if, and if that's the case, you want to know your skill level. I know my skill level is not very high. I know that I, I basically pass games by sheer determination. I never give up and I never surrender. But I, that's those, brush, those brushes on Okami coming. Dude, I hate the brushes in Okami. I just, I hate it. I hate it Z so much. Zio, she has so much trouble with it, and I'm just like, I know, I watch. <laughs> but no, it's um. Well, actually, no, it's 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 with the controller though. Like the controller doesn't work very well with it. Are, and I are you sure? Are, are you sure? Because uh, I am D pad chat. <laughs> well, no, I'm so I'm using it on my um on my Switch controller, and it's just it's not it's not great. Yeah, yeah I don't think it works really well with the Switch. No, it's bad. Um, it, it's just it's just no fun. Um, so when I when I switched over to <laughs> keyboard and mouse though for the for the brush, it was fine. Just I don't like to. I no, I will say I don't do things well on a timer. I just I'm not that person. Like if you say hurry up, I don't know my name anymore. Like it's a problem. I can't. <laughs> yeah. I cannot oh do God. things on a timer. I'm terrible. <laughs> okay, but, so I'm gonna I'm gonna. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should play Gartic Phone. What? Garlic what? So remember, I, I said earlier in Discord that uh, when oh, I yes, uh, when I when I ask people to play Gartic Phone, um, they run in terror. It is a game where you have to draw art on a timer. I don't like uh, being timed. 